My name's Thomas. I'm here with Adam. Hey, how's it going from RDX Works? Hey, man, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you're in Web3, why Radix is changing the world. How do you think it's going to go? How's consensus? So first off, starting at the end, consensus yeah. is going amazing. Like we've had last year, maybe like three, four people out of 10 would have heard about Radix. And yeah, they're yeah. like, oh, I've heard about Radix. Tell me about it sort of thing. This year, it's more like six or seven out of 10 are doing that. That's good. And like three or four are like, I'm building on Radix. Yes. Or I, I know like ecosystem projects and stuff like that. So that's obviously awesome. Uh -huh. um, as for how I got into Web3, so I wasn't mega early. I'd like known about it personally from about 2014 time. Um, started professionally in 2016, so I co-founded another project that's oh, still nice. going successfully today. Oh, great. What's um, that? Veracity. What is it? Uh, Veracity. That sounds cool. Yeah, that so awesome. that was going really well. Um, I exited out of that um, in about 20, late 2019. Okay. And did the, the whole normal thing of I consulted for a bit. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> and like, I, I don't know what I want to do particularly. I want to do something really cool. And by complete fluke, I saw a video from Pierce. Oh, yeah. Um, just deep dived into Radix Media. And I was Here, like, are you sure it wasn't me, actually? I don't know. It wasn't <laughs> as good looking. There's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> too um, good looking. Too good looking. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, this is really cool. Um, had a 20 minute phone call with him, ended yeah. up being two hours. And by the end of it, I was just like, I want to come and work here. Like, oh, awesome. It was. For me, it's a big thing of like solving real problems. I didn't want to be in like some kind of short-termism of like, oh, it's good for a cycle, mm. or oh, it's going to be the hot thing for a few months. I was like, no, this is a really serious problem that will change the world. So how is Rags solving this? Uh, so one is truly hu human readable transactions. Okay, That's the and big that one. means what compared to? So that means that when you load up the wallet, yeah, um, the Babylon wallet, you see in exactly what's happening with assets. So you see like any badges you're displaying for permissions. Okay. You see these assets are being withdrawn from that account. It's going through this DAP and you're going to get deposited back these things. And you can even set guardrails or uh, guarantees yeah. at the platform level rather than the application level. Okay. So like something like Uniswap build on Radix doesn't yeah. need to build slippage into their smart contract. Sure. The network does it, which also means that you're not at the mercy of, well, is that at the application layer built in correctly? So that's one big one is you can just, you can actually see what you're signing mm -hmm. and have confidence that what you expect to get back is what you will get back. I, I like the vending machine example. Yeah, yeah, okay. What's like, that? If, I, if I go to a vending machine in the States and I try and put a pound coin in, mm -hmm. it just doesn't accept it. Okay. It comes straight yeah. back through again. Makes sense. Because it's programmed, or pro, uh, the machinery is programmed to be like, I accept this. Mm -hmm. If it is not this, reject it. Okay. On Ethereum on an ELC, how many times have you seen people come in and be like, oh, I accidentally sent my USDC to the USDC yeah, smart yeah, contract. Yeah, yeah. How gone. do I get it out? Yeah, and you're yeah. like, you don't. You don't. It's gone forever. Again, terrible yeah. user experience. Absolutely miserable. Also a terrible developer experience yeah. because even if they proactively want to sit there and be like, oh, actually, I'm going to say like, oh, if someone sends me token C or token D, send it back. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're really conscientious. They have a system for all the way to A to Z. Yeah. Well, then someone makes an Ape NFT. Okay. And like, ah, oh, that didn't exist when I published my smart contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it gets lost in the void. Okay, wow. On Radix, it's like, is it a pound coin? Okay. If it's token A, give out token B. If it's token B, give out token A. Anything else, not valid. The slot okay. doesn't fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, that's, and that's what <coughs> everyone really wants and what everyone's really looking for. In my opinion, one of the biggest barriers to mainstream adoption is user experience. Yep. Right? And so that's why I was so big on RanFi was yep. because I'm like, and this is the age old saying, it's kind of corny, but it's like my grandmother can maybe use it. Yep. My mother can use this. You know what I mean? And it's just because she uses her banking app and all her stuff. She has her iPad out and all her different tools and everything yep. that she's interacting with. But if I try to teach her that she had to go to, say, Coinbase to onboard fiat and then go to MetaMask to transition it to Ethereum and then send it over there and then have MetaMask use a some type of bridge swap where yep. you're interacting with a different protocol and trying to get a different token. Like it's just all this very it's confusing. It's not just using it. So yeah. when you see, um, over the like, past couple of months, whenever you see like um, the wrong transaction signed, yeah. you see people being like, oh, well, my, my account got drained because I approved a transaction that I shouldn't have done. And you see some people come back and go like, oh, well, you should have used a hot wallet. Yeah. Hot like, port? A uh, hot wallet. Oh, a hot wallet. Okay. And it's like, oh, you shouldn't have like directly done it. You should have transferred it to another wallet yes, first yes, and yes, only yes. have that in it exactly. to make that not happen. It's like, yeah, that's an extra step. It's like, yeah, now you're just adding more complexity. And Way humans, more. They take the path of least resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. They're always, never going to sit there and be like, oh, this isn't as convenient. Mm -hmm. Like, they always do. Even down to things like seed phrases. Yeah. Like, would you walk around with your entire net worth in a safe on your back? No. Which had one key, and if you lost that key, yeah, yeah, you're broke forever. forever. Like, yeah, yeah. No. Let my seed phrases are sitting in my safe right now. It's kind of funny on a piece of paper. Uh, where's that, that and what's, right the, what's the code for it's it? A, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a 1256. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's crazy. And yeah, then yeah. 
that's before you even get to the level of like, oh, have you got your seed trays backed up somewhere outside of your house in case your house burns down? Exactly. That is not usable mm -hmm. for normal people, which is why you get things like the FTX thing. And people are like, well, I, I don't want to do custody. I don't need self custody because yeah. I don't feel confident doing this. Yeah. And it's the same as using Web3. It's not enough of like, oh, this is how you do it. Yeah. You have to feel confident in doing it. Yeah. Because ultimately, it's people's money, it's yeah. people's assets. And just in the same way as like there was a big thing for like online banking to become yeah. popular, because they're like, oh, I don't trust it. I don't feel confident doing this. Exactly. So they didn't. Yeah. And what Radix does is it makes it so our friends, our family, our, our colleagues outside of Web3 mm -hmm. um, can actually confidently go and interact in this new world. That's good because it's almost like a David Goliath type scenario, right? Where David is the Web3 and the Goliath is like the big traditional yep. fi, finance, banks, where they already have all this set up. But yep. the banking institutions have been around for hundreds of years and they've had a long time to establish this, yep. right? Like if you even look at the dollar, right, the original fiat dollar, there was like eight iterations of the dollar before it actually worked, right? And so it's like it takes a long time to get these things squared out, yep. right? And so the little guy has to be able to be comfortable to be able to use this because banks, if you send the wrong money to a bank account, they're going to fix it for you. Yep. You know what I mean? And so I think it's amazing. That's why what's drawn me to Radix is because you guys are starting to get into that mm -hmm. area. You're getting into that arena. I mean, You're making it comfortable. You're making it safe. It's not only just that. Like, if you look at things like banking as an example, mm -hmm. like, sure, they can do some cool things. It's not a case of like, oh, we're doing some things better than banking or some things better than TradFi. Yeah. But, oh, brush over these things that are way worse. You have to be at least as good as what came before and radically better in a yeah, bunch of other better. ways. Yeah, if you're not, then it's like no one will adopt it. But, yes. it's like, but then you see the other side where even behemoth industries can quickly get disrupted. Like, yeah. I mean, it's somewhat cliched, but look at what the internet did to newspapers. Exactly. Now, right. that doesn't mean that media companies don't exist anymore. It's they do. They're bigger way. than they were before. Way bigger. But the specific allocation of, oh, a newspaper is now irrelevant because yeah. online you can do it radically better. Radically it's better. more convenient, you've got mm -hmm. more competition, you've got more sources. No, you, I like, it. like, if we go back to like print era, we wouldn't be sat here talking. It just, you wouldn't have the editorial platform nope. or everything behind. No. Now, sure. I'd be writing everything down on a notepad, yep. sending it to my editor, he or she'd be changing everything and then shooting it out. Yep. You know what I mean? And it didn't go big until the infrastructure was there. Yeah. So, like, again, YouTube was great. It really blew up when everyone had a camera phone in their pocket. They yeah. could upload HD video. Absolutely. It required a couple of pieces. And I think mm -hmm. this is what Radix does for Web3 is like, how, how do you get to that point where it's convenient, confident, and accessible? Yes. And if you do that, something like, like this is really cool. Yeah. I'm going to put a video on YouTube. I'm, I'm going to put an asset on Radix, or I'm going to interact with the DAP because they want to do it and they see the benefit rather than being like, hey, um, use Web3, like you can self custody your assets. And you're like, why? Yeah. And it's like, oh, because it's really important. And for 99% of people, mm -hmm. no, it isn't. They're like, well, are, they, is, are my assets safe? Yeah. Can I do stuff with them? That's going to be interesting. Self custody is really cool. And so, in like the legal world, custody is a very yep. important thing, especially when it comes to finance and investment and yep. investment managers. Like, it's really important. Is that going to be something like Radix is going to kind of be using down the road? Is like targeting? Because you guys want to take over the entire traditional financial yep. market, right? So, and this is huge. And so, custody is very important. Is that going to play a role in the future? Of yeah, so I think this is also about like making self custody work. Yeah, okay. So, if you look at something like Ethereum, yeah. You can you can self custody your own assets, okay. and that works well for an individual. Let's yeah. say you're like a corporation or something. Yeah, that's why you have things like Gnosis building these incredible multi sig systems okay. because you need permissions. You need different ways yeah. to have different levels of authority, multi signature scenarios, and things like that. Okay, because there's corporate governance behind it yeah. or custody management. Exactly, exactly. On Radex with badges, that's easy. Mm -hmm. So the company issues badges with different authorities. So they can be. What recalled. are badges exactly? A badge, one of these. Okay. So. Great example. Sure. This is a badge. Yes. I am in possession of this badge. Okay. This badge gives me certain permissions. Mm -hmm. And an identifier yep. tells you who you are. Who I am. Doing. I'm yeah, at a yeah. certain level. I can go into certain places. Exactly. But it's not. I didn't. I don't own this badge. Sure. I'm just in possession. It's owned by CoinDesk. Okay. And CoinDesk issue those. If I decided to go and start a fight with someone, they can take my badge. Take off your badge away. <laughs> they can take my badge away, and now I'm not allowed in the event. Kick anymore. you out of the conference. 
And this is exactly the same as if you think like in corporate corporate world. Sure. You have your badge to get into the building. And your badge might let you in the front door, but you can't go in the server room. Mm -hmm. Someone else is going to get in the server room, but they can't go into like the file room or whatever. Exactly. Radix brings this concept of badges on Ledger. Okay. So things like doing multi-sig um, accounts or mm -hmm. complex account structures where you have different permissions can be dumped. Or to take it out of a financial sense, Vitalik did an amazing blog uh, last year about CityDAO. Okay. And it was funny because, and kind of the end of this story, yeah. when we saw that, we were like, we can do this on Radix. We put a blog out literally the next day. Like, yeah, that's, really? that's just badges. Oh, wow. Okay. But the principle of city DAO was like, yeah. what if everyone in a city, yeah. their ability to vote or participate in um, governance of that city yeah. was down to a badge. Okay. But the badge is issued by the city council. Sure. Or the badge issuing entity. Yeah. The authority issuing yep. the badge. But yeah. everyone with the badges can decide who the badge issuing authority is. Okay. So how does this interact and play with in the Web3 like ecosystem, like so why is it important? Think of a DAO. Okay. So think of a DAO. Yeah. Like you could say, hey, we've got like a couple of T1 members of the DAO okay. who their badges decide who can issue the like tier two and tier three badges. Yeah. But if all the people with the T2 and tier three badges go, hey, Thomas, we don't yeah. like him anymore. We're yeah. going to vote him out of the DAO. Okay. 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 Yeah. They like. They can change the issuing sure. entity of that badge. Different like, voting power, different access. Different yeah, and so then they don't have to reissue their badges, create a yeah. whole new system. They just go, no, Thomas doesn't have his badge anymore. Thomas that's given, badge is valid. That's given invalid. to Adam. Adam okay. now gets to decide who gets, who gets badges and how okay. they do it. And then you can change that. And that okay. means you're not having to rebuild systems from scratch. They're actually, sure. the permission system is highly adaptable. Yeah, that's crazy. It's just, it's kind of fascinating because it's like all these different things. I, I was talking to... Um, uh, Beam, you know what Beam is from yep. Radlock? Yep. He was kind of explaining this concept to me a little bit before. And he was using it in terms of accessing vaults yep. and buckets. And so, and how like the buckets are transferring the different assets. Like, so, like with your badge, is that going to get assigned to your actual wallet? Is it going to sit in your wallet? Is it going to be an NFT that you say, hey, look at my cool badge, everyone? Like, yep. how does that work? So, badges are basically a type of NFT. Okay. Um, so, how you like they do sit in your account uh -huh. um so they exist in your smart account on radix yeah and again one of the properties of them is you can show them yeah so again when i come into the venue here mm -hmm. i don't have to give my badge to the person on the door yeah i show them my badge yeah yep, they might exactly. scan it and go oh you've got that badge cool you can come in good to go simple things like that become really easy and like outside the web3 world it's like the office badge uh -huh. you have it on your keychain you tap into the front door yeah like it makes sense and okay. like if the person who gave you that badge and like the sysadmin people or the security team are like oh you get your badge yeah if the security person leaves who has a higher profile badge they just yeah. get their badge changed exactly and someone else gets it yep yep and this gives you a ton of cool things you can do some awesome things on like permissions and stuff like that so if you cool. want to like you can only participate in this pool if you've got like a certain badge for example like you're a member of this DAO and you're the only person who's allowed to interact with like the funding mechanism of this but you need three badges of the five people okay. who've got the badges you can set all those permissions natively on the network and not need application layers and sing on top of it okay to try and make it work and it'll all be in like your radix wallet and everything yep. okay cool and so what else would the radix wallet entail so i remember pierce was talking about like liquidity pool to token yep a lot of people don't exactly know what that means but it's basically like tokens that you get in return for providing liquidity yep. to some kind of exchange right and so like that's going to be on the Radix wallet as well. Like, yep. what, what else will that encompass exactly? So, I mean, is it going to be a one stop shop like Walmart? Be like, hey, this is my Radix wallet. I got everything at Walmart. It's right here. So, your wallet, your Radix wallet basically yeah. holds assets mm -hmm. and identities, or identities in the form of personas. Okay. So, this is where we need to change the thinking of a wallet a little bit. Okay. So, it sounds dumb, but imagine your wallet in your pocket. Yeah. You might have your gym badge in there. Yeah. You might have your driver's license yep. and your. Key card, card, your badge, your, your key card, to get in, yeah. and they all live in your wallet. Okay. But if you go and move to another gym, yeah, you get a different gym pass. Yeah. And that lives in there, and so okay. all of this lives in your Radex wallet. But your uh -huh. wallet is like a container uh -huh. for the things that matter to you. Okay. And same with like identity and personas on Radex. Sure. So when you log in on Ethereum, you log in with your account. Mm -hmm. And but hang on, who I am is not what I own. Yeah. They're two distinct concepts. And likewise, if I'm connecting to say like. A government agency in the in the future when everything's Web three. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to connect with I'm Adam Simmons. Yeah. Here's like all my details mm -hmm. as a citizen of the country. Sure. If like I'm your logging, password and everything. Like yep. That if, kind of if, stuff? if I'm logging into Reddit. Okay. I don't want to log in with my like main idea. I want to yeah. log in with a username or something like that. That's a different persona. Okay. Yeah. And this idea of like identities as personas mm -hmm. means that you can segment that and you can do some cool stuff with Radix. That's as well, really interesting. That is really interesting. Yep. Like NFTs. NFTs are personas, right? 
Uh, kind of. So personas are... They represent sometimes. Personas could be represented by an NFT, but yes. an NFT is an asset, which yeah. again comes back to exactly. who you are is not necessarily what you are, cool. but there could be a connection between them. That's a cool concept. And like, splitting those apart can let you do some really amazing things. That's a really cool concept because it's like, in Web3, Everyone wants to reinvent themselves. Yep. You know what I mean? Everyone has like different multiple identities. Like I'm the kind of person I'm docs, right? But when I go and play Fortnite or Apex or something, yep. my Username is Chili Book. You know what yep. I mean? I become a different person. Yeah. You know, and so it is your different person. And, and you don't want that matters. person. You don't want to log yeah. into Fortnite no. and be like, oh, this person who's just logged in has got ten million dollars of Bitcoin. Yeah. Like you don't a, want that. One, you don't is there going to be like a shadow curtain type thing to be able to filter it off? How does that work? So it's just which persona you log in with. Okay. So personas in many ways are much more like um, pass keys or things like that. Sure. But in a decentralized way, you don't have to trust your login details to Google or Apple. Okay. It's on the network, controlled by you, owned by you. Okay. But a really cool functionality is um, something we call the Radix Off Ledger Authentication Service, sure. Roller. Yeah. Um, it was one of the new things that came to release candidate. Yeah. So Roller is basically say I've got my badge. Um, or, or, sorry, not my badge, my persona. persona. Okay. And I go to an e-commerce store. Yeah. And one of my personas, my real Adam persona, yeah. has my shipping address. Mm -hmm. When I connect that persona, the DAP can request like, oh, I need a shipping address. Cool. Do I want to share it? Yes. Yes. I authorize it okay. on the network, but the data, the, my actual shipping address doesn't go on the network. It's sure. a direct connection. Okay. So that's then pushed to the DAP. Yeah. They've got my shipping address, send me something. Wow. They don't even have to store that. Okay. So if then I go and log in two weeks later and I've moved address, yeah. I don't need to go and log into every single e-commerce store I use and update my address. Wow. I just go, they just again, every time go, request your address. Yeah. And I just give them, that's my address. They know it's my address because I've got the authorization of that persona that I'm logged in with, secured by the network, okay. so they can trust that data. And so you can have multiple personas within one wallet? Yep, so I can have, right have Adam from Radix. Sure. And let's say that's my work account yeah. and I'm buying something for the booth mm -hmm. it's got our office one of our office addresses so almost like a separate account with all your additional information identity details okay it's separate and again what you own cool. is not who you are cool and who you are is not necessarily what you are yeah you might log in with both okay. or so you might connect both through sure. radix connect so like i'm logging in as yeah. adam from radix uh -huh. and i want to use my i've got through a badge I'm allowed to spend on our expense account sure. or something. So I can spend from that account with this permission so I can log in with that account to uh -huh. be doing that, which is separate to my personal account or okay. to my savings account or cool. to my investment account. Yeah. You can separate all of that in an intuitive, easy way with Radix. That's really cool. That's really cool because it's like, think about even just like, go back to the example of like moms, right? Yep. So my mom plays Candy Crush all day and she also plays Words with Friends yep. all day, right? And so say you have some type of like in-game skin, like NFT asset yep. that's there, and my mom wants to go buy young redhead potty 22254, yep. right? And then so all of a sudden she can have all of her assets in that persona, but then she can also go to Target and actually buy stuff from her actual like wallet account that's Janet Gavney that's sitting there and is just buying different yep. things. So not quite. Okay. So on that, like again, you're because of the nature we're programmed um, from using Web3, yeah. you again combine that account and that persona as the same thing. Okay. So she could have the same persona. Let's say it wasn't using a better example. Sure. Let's say I've got just Adam Simmons as a human. Okay. And I use that for my gym. Yeah. And also my persona for my bank. Okay. So for my gym account, I might use the equivalent of like my asset account sure. that is my checking account. Yeah. But at my bank, I want to connect my checking account, but also my investment account. Sure. Okay. It's still with the same persona. That's still how they identify me based okay. on my persona. Sure. But they have I can different I can access different asset accounts I have in my smart wallet mm -hmm. to be able to be like oh no I'm sharing this with this one I want to use this one for my gym. Okay. So you can segment on either side. Okay. And that creates a whole load of things you can do. So in your in your mum's case, as I say, like when she goes and does Candy Crush, she may just want to like do something with her persona and a like her gaming account just yes. a little bit of money in it not much <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you don't want to connect your like pension account to candy Club. sure sure okay yeah and so she wants to say set up a little account so say her grandkid yep so my niece right uh wants to play candy crush through her account on her ipad she can set up her own account give her 20 bucks yep and she can buy little things just within that account and that her persona yep. too so what do you can do on that as well um the network enables you to create like multi multi sig permissions. Yeah. So a one of the big ones I think is really cool okay. is this idea of a child account. A child account? Yeah. So you can Perfect. basically have, that's what I was thinking in my head. That's what I was trying to yeah. think. I'm so like, you can okay, basically be like, I'm I'm a parent. Yeah. And I'm saying that I'm like, yeah. oh, my kid has their own persona, their own Radex wallet, their mm -hmm. own account, and I top that account up with say 
200 bucks sure. for them to go out. Now they can spend, I could, the network would allow you to set up a spend rule of being mm -hmm. like, oh, they can spend $50. But if they want to spend over $50 in a day, or like they want to spend $200, I have to authorize it as well. Okay. And so okay. we both okay. have to sign and then they can spend that. Cool, yeah, So you yeah. can do all of these sort of things, cool. which are real world use cases yeah. that people would actually want. Could you like hook up credit cards, that kind of thing? Not like in this sense, like, um, you know what I mean? In, like In theory. In theory, okay, yeah. cool. That's cool. That's pretty fascinating, yep. I love it. What you guys are working on over here is incredibly impressive. I've been following you all for a long time. And so uh, I really like it, this consensus booth is kind of amazing. Uh, yeah, the, the team's done a great job. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure people watching will have seen some of your shots from around, but yeah, like, yeah. it is a glowing beacon yeah, of it is. everything. We're in one of probably the best spot in the entire thing. We've got massive walkway that way, yeah. massive walkway that way, yeah. between like the main stage and stuff. So I don't think anyone comes to consensus and won't have seen the Radix booth. I agree. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, when it's not to like the color scheme and everything that's going on, I know you can't see it on that, <laughs> but hey, it's been really cool. But yo, Adam, thank you so much for taking some time. Thank you so much. Uh, you want to leave us with anything? A little tidbit here and there? Uh, of course, Babylon comes out, uh, or the Babylon upgrade goes live sure. on and around the 31st of July, depending on Epoch. Cool. Um, so that's Oh, it's set by the Epoch? Uh, yes. Oh, wow. So okay, when the network cool. upgrades, it'll yeah. be locked in, and then it's basically the network switches over when that April comes. Wow, okay, so, okay cool. Um, that's why we say on or about the 31st of yeah, July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it depends um, on when it comes through. So, but basically, they'll be flicking over. That's when you get smart contracts on Radex. Cool. You get all the cool dApps that are here on the booth today with us. Um, we'll be able to go live. You've got the Radex wallet you can go and use. Cool. Really, that's the, it's not the end point. That's the start. Everything okay. up until now is like the the early alpha like playtesting phase of yeah. it that's when it goes wild and like the moment that any day the next big thing could happen it's a point when you, your mom you can yep. just send her a link to the radix wallet yeah and she won't be on the phone two five minutes later being like yeah. hey thomas how do i set this up oh cool, cool she'll just be able to do it just be able to do it really easy that's yep. awesome so I'll, I'll ask one more question what's your most excited thing what, what is the thing you're most excited about for web3 in the future for web3 in the future Ooh. If you can pick one outside of babylon launch okay so Probably the ability or more complex systems of interoperability before da between dApps. Okay. So one of the things, again, shameless Radix plug again, <laughs> one of the things I love with the transaction manifest yeah. is anyone familiar with like Zappify, which was in DeFi summer huge. It was the ability to like, I've got USDC, but I want to go and go into a Uniswap pool and then stake those LP tokens on SushiSwap. Cool. It basically done a single transaction. Cool. For them to do that on Ethereum, they had to launch a smart contract for every single interaction. That's expensive. It's expensive, and it's complex, difficult. and yeah. huge security risks. Yeah. On Radix, that's all in the transaction manifest. That's gonna be cool. So people can build these things and mean like, hey, I can just make these simple, basically front ends, sure. to manage your accounts, to manage um, your assets online, and do really cool things. Awesome. And I think that kind of interoperability will see the same boom as like Web 1 to Web 2, when yeah. we went from being like static web pages to suddenly a web page has tens if not hundreds of API calls, pulling in different platforms, different things, yeah. to create rich experiences. Wow. And I think when that really starts to become a thing in Web3, it's gonna get really exciting really quick. Well, that sounds really cool. Yep. I'm excited, it makes me really happy because a lot of people are worried about the bear market and blah, 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 and Web3's dead, eh, no, it's not. It's just, it's a tough time right now for everyone across yep. the board economically, but the future looks bright in my yep. opinion, and Radix is kind of leaving the way. So thanks for sitting down thanks. and taking the time Pleasure. for me. And uh, let's enjoy the conference. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to stay up to date on all Web3 content.